morning, good morning, everybody. Y'all are excited to be in the house of the Lord. It's going to be a great day. I am honored and privileged to be here. As our host here in Tacoma said, my name is Jesse, and I'm the location pastor out in Yakima, the greatest city in Washington. Please don't boo me, everybody. I love where I'm from. I love Yakima, but it's such an honor to be here. And any single weekend when someone's communicating, they always shout out other locations. I want you to know there are people watching from other locations, okay? So I'm going to look in the camera. Those in Bellevue, those in DuPont, those in Yakima, people online, we're glad that you're watching today and joining us. It's going to be a good day. I'm really excited to be sharing today. And uh, before I go, I would be remiss not to give honor where honor is due. And I love me music. Anyone love music in the house? It makes me vibe. It gets me excited. And this was years ago. I heard it said from a rapper, actually, and he said this. If you admire somebody, you should go ahead and tell them. People hardly get the roses while they can still smell them. And the whole significance behind that was saying sometimes we wait for someone's end to tell them what they meant to us. And I don't want to pass that opportunity by. Our senior pastors are incredible. And I just want to say thank you. We honor you. We love you. And we believe and are grateful for the investment that you've made here in Tacoma, Bellevue, DuPont, and Yakima. We are so grateful for your investment. And it is an honor and privilege to be on the platform here today. But I'm ready to share. Are you all ready to hear the word today? I want to give you the title of my message today. And it is simply this. There's more to the story. Can you do me a favor here in Tacoma and all of our locations? Give a little nudge to your neighbor and say, there's more to the story. There's more to the story. I'm going to go ahead and pray and we will get this started. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today and we thank you for the opportunity to gather together. And I pray as I share this word, I pray that seed would land in good soil, that we would not just see fruit happen immediately, but that we would see fruit happen for months and years and years to come. God, we're expectant, we're excited, we're ready, and we want to hear what you have to deliver. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone said, amen, 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 amen. There's more to the story. And I'm going to let you know, I'm a high encourager. And my hope, I'm going to tell you straight out front, my hope is this, that with today's message, you would be challenged, you would be encouraged, and that you would be inspired, and that you would leave believing that there is more to your story. But before I go anywhere with there's more to the story, I want to share with you, I got my wife in the house with me, and we got a beautiful family. We got two kiddos. They're not with us today. Thank you, Jesus, a weekend off with no kiddos. But one of the things you need to know that it took us four years, everybody, to take new family photos. For those of you who take three to four family photos a year, don't judge me, okay? It took us four years, so we have two kiddos now, we only had one at the time, and you will see on the screen right behind me, that is our new family photos. I got to show off. It took us four years to take some pictures, everybody. So you'll see in the picture, you got me, you got my beautiful wife, you got my youngest son. He doesn't want to smile right now for the fact that he, his front tooth got knocked out. He's a little self-conscious right now, but that truth is going to grow back. And then we got our little one with the long hair. That is Joseph, a.k.a. Baby Samson a.k.a. baby Fabio, whatever you want to look at, okay? He is wild and crazy. And for those who are Bible nerds, he has taken a Nazarite vow, and he's not cutting his hair. He's have a long hair. He's going to flow. But how many of you know when you take family photos, the photos that you most of the time put up are not what the photo shoot really was like? There's always more to the story. So I want to show you a photo of what the photo shoot really was like. You're going to see it on the screen here just shortly. That was the photo shoot. Some of you call that tears. I call that passion, okay? Uh, speaking into the life of my children. So you saw one photo, but how many of you know there's always more to the story? Isn't that so true, everybody? And I know for some of you, you think about our life and the things that we're going through, but there's always more to our story. And what I love for those in the house, wherever you may be, some of you are OGs in God's house. OGs are people who have been born and raised in the church. For those of you, I applaud you. We're grateful for you. 
for those who are a couple of years in the church, I would put myself under that. That is me. For those of you who are brand new to the church, you've been here for a couple months, we're so glad to have you here. But I want you to know this, that if you're a first-time guest today, you're going to hear it already before, and you're going to hear it again. Make sure to stop by and get connected at the Connect area. We want you to get connected. We want to give you a free gift, but more importantly, we want you to get connected in the house. You're going to hear it every single week, and we're not trying to sell you something. We understand that people need people, and we need each other. And what you are doing sometimes without getting a free gift, more importantly, you're missing out on a relationship that God can be sending your way. So if you're a first-time guest, we're glad to have you at all of our locations. Stop by our Connect area after service. So I talked about OGs, I talked about a couple years, and I talked about people who are new to the church. How about some recently saved people? Any recently saved people up in the house? Oh, y'all are saved for years up in the house. I want you to know if that is you, whatever location, you're in good company, because our Yakima location, we're barely saved, everybody. Barely saved. And if you don't believe me, I had a team member come up to me a couple of weeks ago, and he goes, hey, I got I to gotta talk to you, Pastor Jess. And I go, yeah, what do you want to, what do you want to share? He goes, I've realized since being here that everyone I talked to was either an addict, they did some time, and they're brand new to church. Welcome to Yakima, everybody. <laughs> and so you're in good company if you are newly saved, but I want you to know there are people in Yakima who have been in church, but what I love about our church that's four physical locations, those people who have been planted in the house, I need you. We need you. Those people who are new to the church going, you can do it, you can stay consistent, you can be planted in the house and you will see favor upon favor upon favor. So understand, we need one another. How many of you believe this? That God has been good, is good, and will continue to be good, amen? And I just know this, that God has so much more in store for the church. He's not done. He's just getting warmed up. I believe here in Tacoma, God's getting warmed up. I believe out in Bellevue, God's getting warmed up. I believe in Yakima, you better be preaching me down right now, that God is just getting warmed up. In DuPont, God is getting warmed up. God is doing some incredible things in his house. He's been so, so good to us. Matthew 16 says this, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And God's house said, amen. I want to dive into my passage for today, and it is one of my favorite characters in the Bible, and actually more recent years. And his name is Joshua. You will find him in the Old Testament. And Joshua has a significant part that he plays. If you want to read about it, it's the sixth book in the Old Testament. And what Joshua does is you need to understand that he was selected to finally enter the promised land. The Israelites, God's chosen people, had a promise that there was going to be a land flowing with milk and honey. And this wasn't promised to Joshua. This was promised hundreds of years ago to Abram, who wasn't yet Abraham. And at this pivotal moment, Joshua was going to lead the people into the promised land. There are people from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, who are heavy hitters in the Bible that did not enter the promise, but Joshua led the people. So this is a significant moment. And I want to read right now, picking up in this moment, in Joshua chapter 4, verse number 1 through 7, and it reads like this. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right, th right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you, and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. Verse number 4. So Joshua called together the twelve men, he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each one of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of tribes of the Israelites to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, What do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel for 
ever. Let's pause here again. Joshua is leading the people, the geographical last barrier into the promised land, and the Jordan River dries up. And before the Jordan River and they cross over, he sends 12 men from each tribe of Israel to grab a stone to remind them of God's goodness and faithfulness. That in this moment, they need to remember not just then, a couple of days later, and years and years down the road. Memorial stones are so important. Has anyone ever heard, or have you ever said this, them good old days? Man, those were the good days. And I love the good old days because your stories just get better and better and better. You were a better athlete in the good old days. You barely made varsity, or you were in better shape, or you had so much more. But what's so interesting is I don't want to say the good old days or the great days are bad things. They're okay to remember, but we can't camp out in the good old days because God still has good days and greater days ahead. There's more to the story. And what can happen sometime with memorial stones is we have memorial stones as good things, good old days, that God was so good back then. But I want to remind you all today that memorial stones are not just to remind us, they're to inspire us, they're to encourage us, and to move us towards action. We got to move towards action, everybody. So for the remainder of my time, I want to share with you, and I want to just light up some fuel. I want to inspire you and encourage you with a couple of statements that God has more for your life and more for our church. First off and foremost, there's more to our story. Our church has been great, God has been great, but God's not done. In John 14, it says this, Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these. Isn't that interesting to read? When I read that, I get so fired. I'm like, God, who can I lay hands on? What can I do? Because I want to do greater things. But the more that I read the passage and I look over it is think about the things that we get to do now. When we read Bible times, there was no technology. There was no Wi-Fi. Right now, let me give you a real-time example. I am standing here in Tacoma, and like I said, on the other side of the screen, there are hundreds of people watching. Greater things. There is more. If you didn't know this, on this stage right now, in 1992, the building we're in here in Tacoma was in bankruptcy. There was no atrium. There was no youth center. There was no church kids. DuPont didn't even exist. Bellevue didn't exist. And for sure, Yakima didn't exist. Greater things, there is more. And I want to inspire every single one listening right now that God has more in store. The first thing I want to make sure that he has more in store is this. There are more miracles waiting to happen. I didn't make a mistake when I said miracles. I think sometimes when we heard the word miracles, it's kind of like this. Oh my goodness, are you seriously saying that? I believe when we respond that way, it kind of shows our faith. Well, miracles, and the best way that I can describe it is simply this. Miracles are the things that, that you pray about, that when they happen, you only know they were possible because God came through. That's miracles. For some of you, your prayers, it was by your might. It was by your power. So does God really get credit for that? Miracles are the things that he intervenes and that he does what he does. And I don't want to be just a location pastor up here and tell you, man, I believe for the miracles and all those things. I believe that's what God's working through me right now. I want you to know as we stand on platforms sometimes and the things that we are professing and saying, we are God's also doing a work in us. And God's doing that work right now in me saying, miracles. Miracles, I need you to believe big, Jesse. It reminded me this past summer camp, I went to summer camp for our youth students. It was incredible. The tent was stinky after the first day. The kids were spraying cologne in there. I don't know if it was helpful, but I will tell you this. I will sleep in a tent for three nights to see God do some miracles. And we had a lot of things. Kids got, students got inspired. Students got calling. Students got connected. Students really uh, took their faith for their own. And there was a lot of different moments. And parents, if your student hasn't gone to summer camp, make sure you get them registered. I'm telling you, it's going to change their life. 
what you've been trying to do for 15, 16 years in three days. God could do something incredible and extraordinary miracles in the lives of your children. We had a guest speaker come out, and I love our guest speaker, and there was a time of ministry time during our summer camp, and uh, during the ministry time, they started asking some of the students were they believing needing in miracles, and they started raising their hands. And so students started laying hands on students. The preacher, the pastor of the time, started praying and believing, and in that moment, there were students that had literal miracles of healing. What we read in the Bible is not just Bible times, it's happening today. And what I loved about it, I was so inspired because I said, this is what God's trying to work through me. And I remember I had a conversation with the pastor after. I was like, oh, man, that was incredible. God used you in such an incredible way. I, I guarantee you've done that with your youth students. And he's like, I'm going to tell you something very honestly here. When I was flying from Florida over here to Washington, I feel like God wanted to stretch my faith. What you saw happen tonight was the first time I've ever done this. But God was saying, can you believe there is more? There is more. Did you know this, that faith is motion activated? Sometimes we can believe it, but we got to have some action. And I love the fact because he inspired me in that moment. But I also want you to know that I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big music guy, like I shared some lyrics earlier. And there is a song that I'm really playing right now over and over and over. And it's called Another One by Elevation Worship. Oh, we got some people excited over here for that song. Y'all got some good taste here in Tacoma. And for me, when I first heard the song, it just stirred my faith. Because I'm telling you, this is the season of my life that God is stirring me in these things. I need you to believe, Jesse, that there's miracles upon miracles upon miracles. And sometimes we can't just hear it. We got to continue to hear it and profess it. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to read some of the lyrics to the song. And I hope it gets you fired up because when I hear the lyrics, I just want to let's go. Let's go take on the world here. And here are the lyrics, miracle after miracle, open door after open door, here it comes. So get ready for another one, because another one is on the way. Who's believing for another miracle on the way in Tacoma, in Yakima, in Bellevue, in DuPont? But we can't just be hearers of the word. We got to start speaking the word. So I'm not done with the lyrics yet, just everybody. I'm going to need your help and participation here. Because we got to start speaking it and believing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the next line, but I'm going to explain when I say this last word, then you're going to say this at every single location. And don't give me some faith. Give me some loud faith. Let's say it together. So before you start, I'm going to explain it here. The next line is this. Because if he told the sun when to rise, and then here's the key word, and it did. And when I say and it did, this is what y'all going to say. He will again. Y'all ready, everyone? Let's practice really quick. Because if he told the sun when to rise and it did, oh, that, that's some decent faith. Come on, I need a louder faith here in the location. One more time. Because if he told the sun when to rise and it did, whoo, y'all ready? Y'all ready? We're going to continue on. It's that same pattern. What I love about this song, it starts saying, professing scriptural things of God's favor and miracles in the Bible, and we're speaking them for you. So let's continue on. And if he told the storm to be still, and it did. And if he told the sea where to split, and it did. Woo, faith is rising here in Tacoma. I believe faith is rising out in Yakima. I believe faith is rising. Let's continue on. And if he told the chains when to break, and they did. And if he told the bones, come alive, and they did. And if he told the stone, roll away, and it did. And if he told the grave, let him go, and he did. And again, and again, and again, because another one is on the way. I'm telling you, you got to start professing and believing these things. Faith is motion activated. And you know when they have a good song, they always have a remix, everybody. So some of you need to make your own remix. And you need to start professing what God has done in your life. I was an addict. He will again. I overcame this. He will again. He restored my marriage. He will again. God brought my kids back to church. He will again. God got me out of debt. He will again. You got to start making your own remix to know that God has more miracles in store 
for you. There are more miracles in store. You also want to know what there also is more of? There is more provision ahead of us. And I know provision can be a hard word to hear sometimes, but because depending on your bank account, you're like, your boy don't got no provision. But I want you to know that God has more provision for you. No matter if you have plenty or barely getting by, there is more provision. I love what the Apostle Paul says, I've learned how in seasons of a little and a lot to still trust in the Lord. And I love this in Philippians 4.19, it says this, in this same God, the same God that has provided for your friend, that same God will provide for you. Who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. He supplies all our needs. It may not always come the way you expected, but he is a provider. We just got to look at scripture. He provided honey from a rock. He provided water in the desert. He provided manna on the ground. He provided and fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves. Our father is a provider. There is more provision on the way. Me and my wife are big fans of The Chosen um, Show. And uh, it's been really great to watch. And we can't wait for the next episode because it's going to be incredible. But one of the things there, the actor that plays Jesus, his name is Jonathan. And I don't want to mispronounce his last name. It's like Rume or Rumi. And uh, he has a thing, a documentary on Amazon Prime. And on Amazon Prime, it shows that since he's been this pivotal, this world-renowned character who people know all across the world, that as he's played Jesus, like just the stardom, all the things that have happened. And everywhere he travels, people are like, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. And he's just the actor. But what's so great about the documentary is he just shows and wanting to know um, and living the life and wanting to see other people's thoughts on what they believe about Jesus. But there's this really interesting and powerful moment in the documentary where it shows before he was ever cast as Jesus, he actually had overdraft and he had no food in his apartment. And what happens is he literally pulls out his own little camera and he sets it up and just believing God for more provision. And he pulls out four envelopes that he got in the mail that day. And he opens up one, a $60 check. He opens up another, a $400 check. He opens up another, it's like a $300 check. And the last one's like X amount of dollars and it's like over $1,000 within a day. And he's all, thank God for his provision. So wherever you're at, understand there is more provision ahead of us. Here's the next one you need to know, church family. There's more land to occupy. More land to occupy. In my office right now, I have three photos. I have my four-year-old family photo that we're going to put a new photo up, the ones that you just saw. Then we have a photo of me on stage here in Tacoma. And then we have a photo of our congregation in Yakima. And it's three things to me that matter a lot to me. And so I told one of our team members, I go, hey, can we actually update these photos? I want a new photo of my family with my two children. I want a new photo of our congregation here in Yakima. And I don't want the picture of me no more. I want a picture of this. And you're going to see it on the screen right behind me. You're going to see a property of Len. And here in Tacoma, they're cheering. But I want to tell you, there's always more to the story, right? So let me give you a little facts about this because you're going to go, why do you want a piece of property as a picture up in your office? But you don't realize that this 20 acres was purchased in 2017. It's on 96th Ave in Wide Hollow, in which you didn't know before we ever purchased this land out in Yakima, we actually had a location in West Valley that launched in 2014. We had a group of families that said they wanted to see God move in incredible ways in that region, in that area. And for five years, set up and tear down, set up and tear it down. And then 2019 came, pandemic, leadership transition, and that thing got shut down. We had seen so many miracles there. We had seen families that got invested. We saw families that got restored. We got students that fell in love with Jesus. We saw kids grow up in the house. And because of all of that, what was a big dream, believing for what was to come was no longer going to happen. 
when 2023 rolled around, everybody, we broke ground in that property in West Valley. And that is the location that we are building out for our Yakima location. You got to be excited because God has more land to occupy. Can I get my shovel out here? I think someone's right. There it is. So please, please, uh, I need you to know this. I am not a handyman at all. So I'm going to let you all know from the top. But what I know about a shovel is it takes a lot of work. And even though I'm not a handyman, I'm willing to do the hard work because sometimes you got to dig and you got to dig and you got to dig. 2017, we bought property. 2000 or 2023, we broke ground on that property. That's going to take a couple of years to be built. But in the meantime, what are we going to do, Yakima? We're going to dig and we're going to dig and we're going to dig. We're going to invite. We're going to believe God for miracles, believe God for provision, because that's what he wants to do. Now, Yakima, let me change Tacoma. Two services. I'm looking here in the auditorium right now, and it is packed in here, but there are still seats that need to be occupied. Are you willing to dig? Are you willing to do some work? God, I know you got miracles. God, I know you got provision. You got land to occupy. God wants to occupy these seats with families. So Tacoma, no matter where we're at, we got to dig, we got to dig, and we got to dig. Can someone grab not a literal shovel, but can someone step up and start to dig? Bellevue, God is working and building that location and families are being a part of that. People are being restored. You got to continue to dig. DuPont, y'all got a property too. We're going to dig. We're going to dig because we believe that God has more land to occupy. Amen, everybody. So my question is, who's ready to dig? Who's ready to dig? There's more land to be occupied. I'm so grateful and thankful to see God moving within our church and not just here in Tacoma, every single location in Yakima. So we've said this, there is more provision, there is more miracles, and there is more land to occupy. But here's the last point that I want to cover. There's more of God's goodness and favor. What I think sometimes, if we're not careful, we put God in his box. I grew up watching a lot of kids' movies, and one of my favorites used to be the movie Aladdin. You know, you had the little genie, you rub the little bottle, the genie comes out, you get three wishes, three wishes, you're done. Why did we treat God like a genie? Why did we think, I prayed for this, he answered. I prayed for this, he answered. I prayed for this, he answered, and now he's done. There's more goodness and there's more favor. God doesn't have a quota that he's trying to make you feel and go, yep, you're done. God doesn't have slices of pie that he's going, yep, you've already had your slice and I'm done. God is like a river. He's like a waterfall. He has fresh, new blessings and goodness planned for a lifetime. Amen, everybody? I had been really excited to share this message, and I just love when God just wants to share a couple of things. And before I got on, maybe a couple of minutes before getting on stage, I felt like he dropped a, a scripture on me, and I want to finish off with this. And it's found in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. It's not going to be on the screen because I literally just came to me beforehand. And it's going to be in the King James Version. I'm just going to recite it so you can understand it. So there's a woman who is having some debt, and she has two kids. And in this situation, she needs to be able to provide. So she comes to a man, Elisha, who is the prophet. And she goes, I need some help and assistance. And he goes, this is what I need you to do. What do you have in your house? So she says she has some oil, but it's not a lot of oil. And I think some right now, some people are asking, what do you have? And you have just a little oil. And then I love this story. It says, go to your neighbors and grab jars, but I love in the New King James it says, or in the King James it says, some vessels. So she goes, her sons go out, and they grab vessel after vessel after vessel, and the oil just keeps pouring out and pouring out and pouring out and pouring out. And then what ends up happening is she goes, do we have any more jars or do we have any more vessels? And after the last vessel said that the oil ceased and it stopped because there was no more vessels. I love that the Bible refers to this, that we are also vessels. And like I said, 
God has favor and goodness more of it. The question is, does he have oil? Absolutely. The question is, can you be a vessel again? For some of you, again, you've rubbed your genie body. You call to God. God, can you do it? And God has answered and answered and answered. And you go, he has no more oil for me. But can you say, God, what is your request? What are you believing for? God, I know you have more goodness. God, I know you have more favor. I know you have more in store. So, Father, I come on back so you can do what you do. Had an opportunity to have dinner with some folks here at the church, and God has done some incredible things in their life. And I love what the gentleman was saying, and he said this, I've seen God's faithfulness and goodness for X amount of years, and sometimes you can go, God, you've been that good. Well, he knows that God has more. And so can you start to believe again? Can you start to dream again? For some of you seen God's faithfulness and goodness, but God's not done with this faithfulness and goodness in your life. God doesn't just want to bless you in favor. He wants to pour it on over to your family, to your children and their children's children. There is more goodness and favor in store. And I love what it says in Psalms 35. It says this, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. God's favor lasts a lifetime. So what I want to do, we're talking about more more provision, more miracles, more land to occupy, and more goodness and favor. And for some of you today, it might be the provision. For some of you, it might be, I need God to do a miracle. For others of you, it might not be literal property as a location, but you're believing for a house. You're believing for increase. You're believing for a family to grow. You're believing for your family, more children, or believing for a child that has not yet come. Or maybe for some of you, you've seen God's goodness and favor and you've thought, you're done. If that is you here in Tacoma, in Yakima, Bellevue, DuPont, or online, and you're saying, God, I know that today that there is more provision, that there is more miracles, that there is more land to occupy, not just in the church, but in my own life, that there is more goodness and favor. If that is you and you want that more, can you raise your hand in the air and I want to pray with you. And I want to believe with you that God has more. And I'm not just raising my hand to instruct you. I'm raising my hand because I'm believing with you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every hand that is lifted. Father, I pray that they would know that there is more provision on the way. That there is more miracles on the way. That there is more land to occupy. That there is more goodness and favor. God, you know every single need. I pray for those who have lost their faith to believe for more, that it would be restored, that you would come through like only you can come through, that they would see signs, healing, miracles, and wonders, that they would see provision come in, that they would see that house that they've been believing for to be purchased, that they would believe for that child, for that family to increase, that that would happen, and God, that they would believe and know that you are a good Father that has favor and goodness. Show them more, Father. Show them more because another one is on the way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. But secondly, I want to do one more prayer. And I want to do a prayer for salvation. And this is my favorite portion of a service because I remember 12 years ago when that was given for me when I was sitting in an auditorium like this and not knowing the more that God had for me started with him surrendering my life over to Jesus. And for some of you probably done that before and you've veered off in ways and haven't been in the house for a long time and today's your day to rededicate because you want that more. Or for some of you, today is your first day being in the house and you're hearing the good news that God has more. Well, today is your day to surrender your life over to Jesus. I love what the Bible says in Romans. If you believe in your heart and confess in your mouth that he is Lord, you will be saved. So if that is you here in Tacoma, DuPont, Yakima, or Bellevue, and you want to surrender your life to Jesus, I want every eye closed and every head bowed. If that is you saying that today is my day to surrender my life to Jesus, what I want you to do is I want you to shoot your hand up in the air. No one looking, no one watching. Shoot your hand up in the air. God, we thank you for hands that are being lifted here in Tacoma. We thank you for hands that are being lifted at all of our receiving locations. God, we thank you for what you're doing. And so I right now I want every single person to repeat after me, especially those who are surrendering their lives to Jesus. Say this, Lord Jesus, 
welcome to my world. Forgive me of all my sins and come into my life. I boldly declare today you are my leader, my Lord, and I believe today that you have more for my life and I won't be the same again. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, can you do me a favor here at all of our locations? Can we celebrate those who made that decision to give their lives to Jesus? We celebrate you today.